so we start at 2.30 and uh, waiting for everybody to be here, including conductor. We have a guitarist. So they have to rehearse the business with the ladder and uh, that might take a good half an hour. <laughs> so today we're doing a first uh, stage hand piano rehearsal. So it's quite technical, quite probably quite slow. I always end up falling in whatever pit I play, I always end up hitting my head or, 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 or falling in the dark. So all's fine so far. Okay, in the hem up so I can stitch it in properly afterwards. The first step of a mini. Morning, morning. Every department you go to, you know, it's you're offered shortbread and coffee. So that's one of the, the big pluses of the emerging artist scheme. <laughs> Good morning, members of the Parliament. Have a complaint. Did you please make your decision this morning? So the rehearsals could please have come up on stage. All right. All right. Okay, I'm coming. Anything to say? It's for Sina, for the show. So this is just like keeping everything in place instead of the pins. Today it will be room number three. Because it's very early morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, morning. Oh, good morning. Or rather, dobry ranok. Dobry ranok. Yes. Sir Tom, bring me a newspaper, uh, and this is article about Ukraine. So I will read it. The wig room is so much fun. It's like a little like meeting place. Everyone comes here. What time is it? Wait, hold on. <laughs> what time? Now quarter two. Now quarter two. Okay, we have a reset call now. <laughs> cool. Right, I'm coming. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> Today we are doing the access performance of Il Barbiere di Silvia, uh, or the Barber Seville, as we're doing it in English. An access performance is whatever your access need. It should be easy to access that or easy to feel comfortable. All the people that are coming today, a lot of them are coming because they can't normally come to the theatre. And so this is a, a really positive and exciting time and they're ready to love all of us. And so all we just have to do is go out there and have a good time ourselves. And I think if we're having a good time up there, then they will too. Hey. Hello, Brian. How are you? Good yeah, fine. It's good to see you. Being involved in theatre and music has, in a lot of ways, I think, really kind of saved my life. Just, it's, it's nice to feel like you have a place where you are valued for yourself, where your creative expression is valued and your personality is seen as an asset rather than a problem. They trust you, they allow you to have amazing experiences on stage and get your sea legs, I guess, is a good way to kind of think about it. 
So you're working alongside all these amazing people, all your amazing colleagues who've been doing this job for decades. And you're seen as an equal to them um, because you're also in the cast. So it really gives you a chance to find out how you work. To feel like you're not alone starting out in this industry makes such a difference. Javier, what are you doing? Ooh. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? From here. Barbiere have two different versions when sometimes the Rosina is soprano, sometimes is mezzo soprano. In our production, Rosina is mezzo soprano, so the Berta doing a lot of singing at the top notes, so it's a good chance for me to show my skills, <laughs> show my voice, and I really am glad because of that. Yeah, my mother told me that I, I was singing everywhere. Yeah, I think it was my destiny, actually. Being an emerging artist, what's that been like for you? <sighs> no, I must start from my background, because... Um, maybe we can see it. Yeah, I have Ukrainian background, so... It's really big for me because, as you know, because as you know, Ukraine experienced really difficult time of the war last nine years. So, and my city was occupied at first in 2014. It that was the first of cities which was occupied, and it's still now. So, I lost my parents, I lost my home, and I. I experienced many, many different things in my life. And when you faced the war, it's changed you completely. When you experience shellings, uh, being in dangerous situation for your life, you don't know will you survive or not, or how it will be. So it's, it's really affect me as a person. And... Uh, bring me very, very new feelings to my art as well. <laughs> so when I moved to UK, um, I started to recover. Everything was different, even language, even language. And new people around, connections, new music and uh, um, many, many different things, new things come to my life and I became to recover from this suffer that I experienced for so long time. Now being here in Scottish Opera, I think it's a very big trust from their side to me as an artist, young artist and um, singer, and I'm really grateful for everything. I'm covering Count Almaviva. Yeah, it's challenging, but it's a beautiful role, I can say. It's a great opportunity for me to put a role like this in the pocket. So, yeah, I'm so happy to do it. So you were at the National Opera Studio? Yes, um, yeah, I had a great year there. Um, 2020 didn't work out because of COVID-19, and uh, it was so stressful because we had nothing to do other than staying in our homes and do some stuff on Zoom and all that. I stayed in South Africa, then I came back in October to do the other year for 2021, 2022. I really enjoyed that because we went to, we came here, we went to World National Opera, Opera North. We performed with English Touring Opera and Indian you know, Oh yeah, so. It all started in my high school in South Africa. We used to sing, me and my friends, used to sing gospel, so they kind of sort of discovered that I had um, a choral sound. I used to watch, of course, uh, the three tenors 
Placido Domingo, Pavarotti and Carrera. So they really motivated me to that. Especially Domingo, his performance uh, are really super. So I, I really like him. So yeah, he is the one who motivated me. And then after that, I want to join Cape Town Opera. I sang small roles and touring around the world and I sang a bigger stage. And finally, when we went to Madrid, I finally met Placido Domingo, which was my dream. So my hope grew and grew that I, I want to become an opera singer. So yeah, now um, here I am. <laughs> I'm not actually looking to see it. There's a little welcome pack. I've got moustaches. That's so funny. Um, because there's a few fake moustaches in the show. Where are you from? From Spain, yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite, quite different weather, quite different day we have here from wherever day we can have in Spain, yeah. Glaswegians are very nice. People is very, very welcoming. I mean, I arrived here like eight, nine years ago and it's home for, for, for me now, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> I feel very welcomed. <laughs> no, it's really lovely to work in a room, like a big team, because well, usually when you, when you're in costume, you might work from home and you're on your own very isolated, so it's very lovely that there is so many people here um, working together. Okay. Mint. Fan. Water. Lights off. Let's go. La 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 la. I will show you now my room in, in opera. Please. <laughs> Berta lives here. <laughs> I have some paper here, newspaper here. Look at Don Bardolo, look at Don Bardolo. Today uh, we're in for the cover calls for the Barber of Seville. So I'm covering Figaro. It's an absolute marathon of a role with so many iconic moments. I'm playing the role of Fiorello and the police officer as well, which has just been amazing. To be singing shoulder to shoulder alongside the, the pros is a really incredible experience because you kind of learn how to rehearse. You learn what a really good rehearsal environment's like and you see how these guys are singing what they do at 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, which so uh, I've got no excuse, you know, but it's a real place where you can kind of experiment, kind of really try and bring your own character to this. Start this noise. What's going on here? I was studying at the conservatoire in Glasgow. There was about eight of us in our year and we all got to kind of hop across the road and have a session with the, the coaches and the head of music here at Scottish Opera. And then we got a go with uh, the, the Scottish Opera Orchestra singing an aria. And it's like going from driving a, a Ford Focus to then a Ferrari or something. You're all of a sudden, you feel like you're kind of swimming on top of this um, incredible sound being led by people who have done this repertoire in and out and no kind of nuances so it was a, an amazing dummy run for us to kind of but yeah it was a a, a real kind of awesome moment so 
so I'm from Sweden. All my family is still in Sweden. I remember seeing Lord of the Rings growing up and being like, I want to be part of that team. It seems so cool. <laughs> so I've always like drawn or danced or been in a choir, but I really enjoy crafts and textiles and stuff. So it was kind of the perfect match between live theater and textile crafts. <laughs> So these like traineeships or emerging artists programs are super important to kind of get your foot in, learn on the job, meet all the people in the industry and be like, hi, this is what I know. Yeah, it's really like essential to introduce new people to the industry, I think. So we are going now to one of the covers. Yeah, yeah. So Berta, have you gone deaf? If you say it, if you tell me now, if I start, if I start playing like that instead of, you would tell me, Javi, have you gone deaf? So Berta, have you gone deaf? All right, so Berta, have you gone deaf? I suppose it's been part as, I mean, in my case, it's been part of the musical stuff and I'm one of the major companies in the UK. Again, even if it's just for a year with the financial atmosphere now in the country and especially in the arts. I suppose that giving the opportunity to younger uh, or, or early career musicians, in this case uh, opera related uh, artists, I mean it's, it's so valuable and the, the only thing we can say is uh, thank you to everybody supporting the program, to the company in first place for trying to make it happen and for welcoming a, a Spaniard among, uh, among the Scots, yeah. I have my own experience of things and here in Scottish Opera there is an um, international space. We can share our experiences. I feel like uh, home, it's my music, is my home. So at least I can do my mark with me, you know. It it's gave me some feelings of something that's stable, that not changes any, any time. And I have uh, my cosmetic and I have my things around me. Uh, so it's, it's uh, helped me, like, <laughs> feeling that everything with me and I'm safe and I'm, I'm okay, like. Singer. Mm, that's an interesting question. Um, you have to love working with other people and it's really long hours and um, physically quite punishing at times. Persistence, um, flexibility, curiosity, a sense of play I think is really important because I hate it when things get too serious. I, I do enjoy being able to have a laugh and like even if it is like a really like intense situation and everyone's like really having not a nice time, it's nice to be able to find a positive side to whatever it is that you're going through. I follow the rules in my life that it, it's biblical that we all just the strangers on the love on this life and on this earth like pilgrims not being involved in making music or creating something would kill me I think so I whatever I do I know that I need to keep following that path and it's gotten me through a lot of really dark stuff to witness it can help a lot of people reach catharsis and to reach a lot of really lovely deep parts of ourselves because music does a lot that words can't so I really really hope that folk watching this do get the music is not just something that is for leisure it's for survival it's for it's a life affirming thing to take part of it's really exciting life exciting life so <laughs> Yes, I am done. <laughs>